Okay, hi, Professor. This is Group 8. We're doing the design and atom manufacturing performance of a heat exchanger with the novel flow path architecture. Um, so the traditional heat exchangers, you know, do this the typical shell and tube uh, single and double passes. So um, it's just a typical cross circular cross section where the, the shell that the fluid goes through uh, just the tubes or just the shells and doesn't switch in between them. Um, so the, the purpose of this paper was to be able to use additive manufacturing to be able to um, experimentally test a new novel uh, heat exchanger flows that we're using uh, as that counter switch core in the middle that allows us to switch from the tube and the shelf flow. And um, this is illustrated a little bit more here. It's the counter flow sandwich between plenums and it allows it to go from the shell into the tubes and it allows for a much more complex flow and then uh, optimizing the heat exchanger, the heat, heat transfer to be enhanced for uh, more compact designs. Uh, our fluid models, again here, are the baseline to the left. It shows that um, it has a pretty uh, dense mesh of about 2 million nodes. And the one of the, to the right is the CSP model that has a much more dense mesh used, accounting for the uh, non-circular tubes in between. And here are the different testing configurations that we use as our modeling guides. You can see that the, the inlet and outlets on each testing configuration are different, while the, the core in the middle is placed in different positions to be able to see the effect on uh, the heat transfer coefficient and heat load and the pressure differential and the outlet temperatures. So uh, we, we followed the China book for the calculations and uh, we calculated Reynolds number, NSL's number, overall heat transfer coefficients and uh, calculated the heat load uh, using the energy ba balance. Next. So, the, uh, so this is the uh, uh, plot for uh, the overall heat transfer coefficient for uh, three different flow rates. And the dotted one is uh, experiment values and the solid one is uh, analytical. And heat exchanger three and four came out to be the uh, uh, best overall heat transfer option, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh and we, we, uh, the difference in value because of the we uh neglected the cross flow uh cross flow part. Next, so it's same uh then follow for the heat heat load uh, per unit mass comparison and. Uh, the the uh, so the, the this graph is for differential pressure and there's a sharp change in five and six it is because uh, of the uh, the cross flow part is in the first half so it changed the uh, uh, abruptly changed the velocity profile so it it, uh, it uh, decreased the uh, pressure next so so uh, there is a big difference between uh, between experimental and analytical values. Uh, there may be two reasons because of, uh, for this. First, uh, we uh, didn't uh, consider the cross flow part. The uh, and second one, there must be uh, surrounding temperature. We didn't uh, consider the surrounding heat loss. Next. So the, the this is the outer temperature for the uh, refrigerant. Next. Okay, so for the baseline model results that we used, we we compared the simulated results for those baseline models that we showed earlier, and then the simu or the experimental results from the paper. So you can see that the the heat load per mass is for different flow rates actually lines up pretty well with the experimental values, given that we used a pretty significant amount of nodes in our simulations, and we use pretty high degree accuracy in the simulations. Kind of the same effect here for the uh, overall heat transfer coefficient. Uh, you can see they don't line up as well as as the uh, the heat the heat load per unit mass, but it still gives a a good representation of of the differences between the experimental and the CSP. Uh, the biggest diff, the biggest uh, caveat of the the steady state simulations was the water pressure differential. And again, in class, like I explained. It was uh, very difficult to be able to um, simultaneously define a mass flow inlet and a constant pressure at the inlet. 
which was the given conditions for the experimental values that you see down here at the bottom compared to our simulated body values that are at the top. So there's a large pressure differential that we actually calculate for the pressure di the differential pressure for the, the water that goes through. Um, and this is, this is uh, going to be um, a problematic for the outlet temperatures. So I, it's not shown here, but the outlet temperatures for the uh, simulated and experimental values were uh, vastly different due to the fact that the pressure differentials for the water was vastly different than the actual simulated value. Okay, and now we're going through the transient results. And this is the transient simplified baseline geometry. You can see, uh, you can see the basic geometry and the number of meshes there on the right. Next slide. And here you can see the results of the CFD simulation from, from Fluent. And the orange outline is the cold outlet temperature. And the red outline is the heat load between the warm and the cold um, pipes. And the blue, out, the blue line is the warm outlet temperature. And you can see that the warm outlet temperature rises very quickly and then reaches a steady state while the cold outlet temperature takes quite a while to rise. And you can see that the rise coincides with the heat load reaching a steady state. So at that point, the, the cold outlet temperature begins to rise and then reaches its own steady state. Um, here you can see the simplified CSP geometry. We did not model the core because it was requiring too many nodes and the computational time was just too great. So you can see on the left that there is just uh, a transition between the shell and the tubes that is basically infinitely thin because in the paper they state that the thinnest core is the best anyway. And here you can see it actually looks quite similar to the steady, to the simplified um, uh, baseline model. And again, the red line is the heat load. You can see that spikes very quickly and then reaches a steady state while the cold outlet temperature rises more slowly and reaches a steady state uh, around eight or nine seconds and the warm outlet temperature reaches its steady state extremely quickly. And here's an animation of the temperature contour. And this is from the simplified baseline model. And you see on the left is the warm inlet, and on the right is the warm outlet. You can see that it's already reached a steady state very quickly. Um, the, the right inlet on top is the cold water inlet and it takes uh, quite a while longer for the outlet to reach a steady state. And this is the this is right. the temperature contour uh, for the CSP. So here you see it behaves basically similarly. Uh, it's probably just due to to simplifications in the model. Um, it behaves quite similarly to the uh, simplified um, baseline model where the heat load and, and temperatures are actually quite similar. And here are the, all the sources that we used for this paper and that concludes our presentation.